All right, you little demons, Jules here, and you know what? I'm delighted to say that today's video is brought to you in partnership with Surfshark. But you know what? More on that in a little bit. There's something to be said for a film that opens itself up to audiences on repeat viewings, allowing them to discover details hidden just below the surface, or perhaps concealed in plain sight. So let's take a look at them today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 movie details you definitely missed the first time around. Number 10. Homer's crashed ambulance is still there 17 years later. The Simpsons movie. One of the most iconic episodes of The Simpsons is the season 2 all-timer Bart the Daredevil, where Homer attempts and fails to jump Springfield Gorge, horribly crippling himself in the process. The best part of the gag, though, is that after Homer is loaded into an ambulance, the ambulance then crashes into a nearby tree, sending the gurney rolling out and falling back down the cliff. And this received a sneaky callback 17 years later in The Simpsons movie, where Homer and Bart jump Springfield Gorge once more and the very same crashed ambulance is briefly visible on screen for a few fleeting shots. Beyond the brilliant callback, it's hilarious that the authorities never bothered to tow the totaled ambulance away, and that weather conditions hadn't caused it to roll back down the gorge itself. Number 9. The Joker's Mask is an homage to the 1960s TV series, The Dark Knight. So the bank heist opening to Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight is absolutely unforgettable, but no matter how many times you've seen it, you probably missed a killer reference that's hiding in plain sight. You see, the Joker and his fellow thieves wear distinctive clown masks throughout the heist, though the clown prince of crime's own mask holds a very special significance. The pattern, which is a blue beard, red eyes, and blue curved eyebrows, is actually a secret homage homage to an episode of the 1960s Batman TV series. The first season episode, The Joker is Wild, marks the debut of The Joker, who later in the episode masquerades under a clown mask while performing an operatic song. His mask looks almost identical to that worn by Ledger's Joker over 40 years later, and given that it marks the actor's respective debut as the character, it's a fantastically poetic tipping of the hat. Number 8. Katie is wearing the Shining-themed socks, The Mitchells vs. The Machines If you've not seen Netflix's The Mitchells vs. The Machines yet, you absolutely, positively need to. It may well end up being the best animated film released all year. With Phil Lord and Christopher Miller producing the film, it's little surprise that it is jam-packed with sneaky, blink-and-you'll-miss-it nods to classic movies. But perhaps the neatest reference in the entire film is a simple but elegant one. Katie can be periodically seen wearing socks with a pattern which should be instantly recognizable to Stanley Kubrick fans. The pattern is exactly that of the Overlook Hotel's carpet in Kubrick's The Shining. Amusingly, this isn't the only animated film the iconic pattern has appeared in. The very same carpet is also visible in Sid's home in the original Toy Story. Brilliant, right? Number 7. Borat unknowingly handles Israeli firearms. Borat. Now, few would call Borat's humor subtle, though Sasha Baron Cohen did nevertheless manage to sneak in the occasional sly and secret gag that only the most attentive of viewers would actually notice. In the infamous scene where the Jewish hating Kazakh reporter visits a gun shop in order to peruse weapons which would, um, defend himself, the store owner then hands him a Desert Eagle pistol. Now, the irony is, is that the Desert Eagle is about as Jewish as guns get, because at the time of filming, it was manufactured by an Israeli company, aptly named Israel Weapons Industries. Now, it's impossible to consider that this is a coincidence, given the attention to detail that Cohen applies to his razor-sharp satire, even if it does mean that the scene is probably more staged than it first appears. Now, as we mentioned, today's video is brought to you in partnership with Surfshock, who are our favorite VPN providers here at What Culture, because the last time we worked together, they let me do this. Howdy, partner. Want to watch new episodes of Not A Day Fiance? By now, you've heard about the benefits of a virtual private network and how great they are in terms of allowing you to access your favorite shows and websites in other countries. But they're about so much more than that. Allow us to be serious for a moment. Did you know that some websites increase their prices based on your location and browsing history? Not with a VPN. Did you know when accessing public Wi-Fi, your confidential data can be accessed by malicious third parties? Not with a VPN. Did you know a lot of banks will immediately freeze your account if you attempt to access it from another country? An understandable precaution, but not with a VPN. Did you know that some countries are starting to ban things like Facebook and TikTok because they absolutely hate the idea of you having any fun? Not with a VPN, Donny. I'll floss all damn day long if I want to. 
Well, thanks to Surfshark, you can be the master of your own digital destiny across unlimited devices, thanks to the incredible offer we have with them. Simply click the link in the description and enter promo code WHATCULTURE for 83% off and three extra months for free. 83% off. If I removed 83% of my clothing, we will be able to put the video out. That's how much that is. And on that mental image, back to the video. Number six, Cora can't play Go, Tron Legacy. So Tron Legacy is such an overpowering sensory assault in a good way that it's actually easy to miss those subtler details. You see, when Sam is rescued by program Cora mid-film and brought back to his father Kevin Flynn's hideout, Cora briefly shows Sam a board game before mentioning that Kevin's more patient style of play generally beats her aggressive tactics. Now this might seem like any old random board game, but it's actually the abstract strategy game Go. This this is important because Go is famously difficult for software to play, the massive complexity of the game making it tough for even the most sophisticated programming to beat a skilled human player. Therefore, it tracks that Cora herself would generally get easily beaten by a genius intellect of Flynn's caliber. Only in 2013, three years after the release of the film, did a software program finally manage to defeat a human at a professional level. Number 5. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's Cameo – Deadpool 2 The Deadpool movies are of course stuffed with cheeky easter eggs details and references, many of them hand-picked by the merc with the mouth himself, Ryan Reynolds. But Deadpool 2 features an especially hilarious one that's easily missed on your first viewing of the riotous scene where Deadpool and Weasel are interviewing potential X-Force members. For a few seconds we can see Deadpool leafing through headshots of candidates, and one of which is the late great associate justice of the Supreme court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And if you look closely enough, you might even notice that the accompanying text identifies her by her affectionate nickname, Notorious RBG. And Weasel can also be heard saying, supposedly, she can rap. Sadly, RBG was just ultimately too damn cool for the X-Force. Number 4. The comic book guy from Unbreakable reprises his role. Glass. So Glass is the bookending entry into M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable trilogy, and features a detail that only the most eyes on fans have even a chance in hell of noticing. Though it's no secret that Glass brings fans back to the iconic comic book store from Unbreakable, you're less likely to notice that the same employee has apparently kept working there for the last two decades. When KC Cook and Joseph Dunn both visit the store mid-film, the clerk is played by the same actor, who 19 years earlier had a very brief encounter with with Mr. Glass. Though the actor's shaggy mane of hair is mostly the same, he's difficult to spot the first time round due to his glasses and extensive facial hair. You'll need to have seen Unbreakable pretty recently to have any chance of noticing this at all. Number 3. Thor Loves Iron Brew – Avengers Endgame Any Marvel Cinematic Universe movie worth its salt is crammed full with details for fans to catch, usually on repeat viewings. One such reference takes place in Avengers Endgame, when we first meet up with Bro Thor in his cottage situated in New Asgard, which to us is actually in Norway. But in amidst his grim surroundings is a sure peculiarity – a scarcely visible bottle of Iron Brew. Now, If you know anything about Iron Brew, you'll know that it's the drink of the Scottish. And the last place that you'd ever expect to see it is indeed Norway. I mean, sure, it can be imported with sufficient effort, but that is beside the point. This is telling because the new Asgard scenes were actually filmed in St Abbs, a small fishing village on the southeastern coast of Scotland. Hence, somebody thought that it would be a good laugh to include an iron brew bottle in the frame, and there we have it. Some have even suggested that Thor might have iron brew lying around because it's held by many Scots to be a potent hangover cure, and the Asgardian has clearly been hammering the beers like a champ in the last five years. Number 2. Alan is watching porn – Alan Partridge, Alpha Papa Now This is one of these hysterical details sure to leave you spit-taking all over your TV when you notice it. In one of the opening scenes of Alan Partridge's Alpha Papa, Steve Coogan's personal assistant Lynn visits him in his shed, where he mentions that he's been researching the Osprey population in the UK. Hilariously though, we can see what Alan's actually researching thanks to the reflection in his glasses, and it is, yes, a nude woman. Given that Lynn can see right through the ruse, she's none too impressed. As audience members though, this one's missed in a flash if you aren't looking at the right part of the screen. 
And number one, the homage to King Kong vs. Godzilla 1962, Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, Godzilla vs. Kong might not be a clever movie, but it sure is a big one, filled with eye-popping imagery, which again, makes it easy to miss the finer details, especially if you watched it at home rather than on the big screen. During Godzilla and Kong's second throwdown in Hong Kong, Kong makes use of his awesome glowing battle axe to fend the King of Monsters off, even trying to shove the damn thing down his throat. Even hardcore Toho fans might have missed that this is actually a nod to the classic 1962 film King Kong vs. Godzilla, where Kong tries to shove a tree down Godzilla's throat with almost the exact same motion. And in case there was somehow any doubt, director Adam Wingard confirmed in an interview that this moment was a full-hearted homage to the 59 years prior scene. He said this, Yes, absolutely, it was really important to me that we reference the big tree scene. I mean, say what you will about Godzilla vs. Kong, but it was clearly a film made with love and reverence for what came before. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 movie details you definitely missed the first time around. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Instagram, where I'm over there doing my Warhammer painting, and that's RetroJ with a zero underscore Insta. Hope to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detail today a lot about details that we actually missed, and you know what? In our lives, we can actually sometimes go over the finer things in the pursuit of the grand and noble. But what I want you today is actually take your foot off the gas and actually give yourself a bit of a break, both physically and mentally, because not only do you deserve it, but it might allow you to appreciate the smaller things that are going on in our lives. Appreciate the good and address the bad as early as possible to make sure it doesn't spiral out of control, my friends. That is some good advice that will hopefully lead you to a healthy and happier life, and that's all I want for you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.